Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Today we're gonna to talk about landing those high value clients and those high value projects. I'm gonna talk you through my mentality when I landed my first $10,000 real estate bookkeeping client. And if you're interested in this and forecasting out your business, check out the free tool we have available to forecast your income for your bookkeeping business. It's free, it's really quick hitting, and it really helps to get to the point. Let's get into today's topic. We're gonna to talk about how you can become an expert in real estate bookkeeping and really deliver to these clients to charge that 10K plus per project, right? This is going to be a quick hitting video. Promise you a lot of really, really good tips. So getting into it here, successful real estate investors are willing to pay top dollar for experts, timeliness, and professionalism. Think about that when you are delivering your product offering, your service offering to these investors, right? Successful real estate investors are willing to pay a lot of money. And the reason for this is because they've had a lot of false starts. They've had a lot that has not gone right where they thought they can outsource and find somebody really cheap and they find that they're doing more work than they previously had. So they're willing to spend the money if they can find somebody who's an expert, really deep knowledge, who can work quickly, deliver results quickly, and is really professional and can help to move the whole business forward, all right? So let's get into three ways to add value to your real estate investors and ultimately land that 10K plus project or engagement. First is focus on value, not cost. This is so important for your entire business. I'm gonna dive into this quite a bit. Second, act like you've been there before, okay? So confidence is so, so important when you're going after those higher end clients. Understanding that you gotta get some projects under your belt, but exuding confidence is going to be your key to delivering and ultimately getting those high end clients that higher dollar value. Lastly, remove friction at the point of commitment. We can do this with process, we can do this with technology as well. All right, so starting with focusing on value. There, this is where we think about the price that you're going to pay me has nothing to do with what it costs to pay me, okay? We're not thinking about the cost of the person that we're hiring, we're really focused on the value. All right, so thinking about that, I want you to stress the end goal, not the day-to-day -day project steps, all right? I want you to use examples and say, what if we can achieve this? Here is the end goal that we're going to get to. I want you to start with that, all right? As opposed to starting with a, here's how we're gonna get there. That's important and that's something that you're going to need to show them you know how to get to that end point, but I want you to start with that end goal. Start painting the picture of the target state, all right? This is what we can achieve. As you do that, you're going to start to see the client do a mental exercise, and you can do this as well, put yourself in their point of view. If I can get X result, I would pay Y in value, right? Again, thinking about the results, not necessarily the cost. So if I can get to my target state, what would that be worth to me? What would I be willing to pay? And lastly, stress your deep expertise in this industry and in this niche. You are not a commodity. This is not like your everyday bookkeeping practice, right? You are in a really complex industry, a really complex niche, right? I talk about it all the time that real estate investing is really tough, especially in QuickBooks. We can certainly do it, but it takes a lot of discipline and it takes some serious expertise. They should not expect to pay the same rate that they would pay a normal bookkeeper. They should be paying for your expertise for sure, all right? So I wanted to show you, you know, beginning with the end in mind, take a previous client, you know, of course you gotta uh, make sure we're not showing any kind of private information or anything, but show them what they can potentially achieve. Maybe the project is like a builder trend sink, okay, which is the case here. And you can show them like, look, I can bring all your costs into one place and look, your QuickBooks expenses are there automatically. Isn't that awesome? Look how quick and easy that is, right? You know, this is the target state. They wanna be able to potentially see a budget that looks like this and that has their revised versus projected everything in one place. That's the end state. That's what you wanna focus on as you're having your sales call. Act like you've been there before. Talking about confidence here, all right? Now, I know this isn't gonna just happen on day zero. You have to get some projects under your belt. You have to get some you know, lower cost, lower price projects under your belt to get here, but ultimately you wanna to work toward a point of confidence. Act like you've been there before. Utilize templates and standard processes. Not only will this help you and save you time, but it exudes this professionalism. It exudes the fact that you've done this enough times that you've been able to templatize this as well, okay? Don't be shy about your price. Don't even hesitate, be confident, that you're worth it, all right? Now, I was so guilty of this. It came time at the end of the sales call, and you know, by the way, should it be the end of the sales call, we'll talk about that. When it's time to talk about pricing, it's like, hey, I know this is gonna sound like a lot, but I'm doing the pricing on it, it's gonna be about five grand or something like that, right? And what that does is it helps the potential client it validate their thought that, hey, I think this might be too expensive, right? I think that the person selling it to me thinks it's too expensive. Well, exude confidence and act like, hey, this is, this is what it costs, this is the price for you, and by the way, I've got you know clients knocking on my door to pay this as well. 
They should be desperate for you. You should not be desperate for their business. Same kind of thing when we talk about price. You're not going to get every project for sure. You're not going to. And just be ready for that. Okay. And if you get shut down, that's okay. Exude the confidence that you don't need this one deal to move your business forward. There will be other opportunities. They should be desperate for your time, your capacity, and th therefore be willing to pay those high ticket prices as well. I want to show you in PandaDoc um, is, is one tool that I use, okay, for, you know, the templates and the processes. I'm going to get into this in the last one as well, but templatizing your proposals. Okay. So creating a document, you know, from a template is a really, really good idea. Okay. So having your templates kind of ready to go and that can look something like this. Now this is PandaDoc, which is a tool I love to use. I have a link. If you want to check it out, you can definitely grab it at a discount, but I've created these templates and then I, I kind of build this out from here. It exudes professionalism and it shows that, Hey, I've done this enough times that I've decided to create a template. Okay. And uh, we'll talk in the, in the next step about how this also helps to re remove friction. Third, remove friction at the point of commitment. So we're going to have our sales call. We're going to talk through, we're going to be confident. We're going to talk about value. And ultimately when it comes time for that customer to say, I think it's time to move forward. I'd like to move forward. We want to make that as easy as possible. And we want to reduce as much friction. All right. So don't leave the sales call without actions, accountability, and deadlines. What you don't want to do is leave the sales call where you've done a really good demo and you've talked about price. You've talked about value and say, all righty, let me know what you think. Get back to me in a little bit right? What we need to do is we need to force action, accountability, and deadlines, right? Ultimately, we'd like to get somebody to commit on the call and actually sign a document on the call. That doesn't always happen and that's okay. So that means we must say, all right, well, I'd like to have an answer because I have a lot of clients knocking at my door. Can we have an answer by Friday? And are you able to provide that answer by Friday? I'll follow up to make sure you can. You're going to get a Panda Doc email, a DocuSign email to do so. And it expires on Friday because guess what? I have other clients again knocking at my door. Request payment right away. So whenever we're ready to get that signature, let's get that payment. That really locks it in. Signing a document is good, right? But can we get payment at the same time? That would be even better. That means that we really can't um, you know, let anybody off the hook there. They're gonna, we're gonna be engaged with it and we're gonna move forward with the project. And it's less about somebody kind of uh, you know, screwing you over. It's more about when the payment happens, we're committed. They're gonna get your info request to you and you guys can actually start working on the project. Stress time constraints. This is really important, right? You're really busy as a bookkeeper, right? They want results quickly. The sooner we get started, the sooner we execute, the sooner they can get on your schedule to get the results that they wanted, right? If we delay, 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 maybe there's somebody else that jumps them in line, right? So the sooner we can get the commitment, the sooner we can jump ahead of those time constraints. Leverage technology, very, very important. I'm gonna demo, demonstrate this again with PandaDoc. All right, so within PandaDoc, there's a document signature software, and it's a really good one. I think it's just the best out there. Personally, one thing I'm going to talk about too is notice that I've got my objective up front on this. This is a little bit more uh, tangible as far as you know, focusing on the goal. So instead of putting the scope of work, here's what I'm going to be doing. Here's the, the, the objective of what I'm going to achieve for you. Okay. Maybe screenshots in here would be, be good as well. Now, this is how I'm going to do it. That's great. This is the info request. I mean, this is the information I need from them to actually do the work. Here's how long it might take. Okay. Here's how the pricing works. Now, how do you price the work? I like to do a hourly rate with an estimate that they're paying off of. So what I mean by that is they're not going to pay me if I don't do all that work. All right. But I'm going to put in a, here's what I think it's going to be. And they're going to pay me a 50% off of that. Now you could do complete fixed price. That's fine. Um, you know, sometimes the rate might be a little scary to some, but again, you're going to build this rate up based on the fact that you're an expert. And so this is what I'm estimating the total to be. And they're going to I'm going to require 50% deposit upon them signing this document. And here's where technology is really, really great. So not only am I going to get a signature from them with PandaDoc, I've actually added a payment as well. Okay, so because my total price is 10980 PandaDoc is going to collect a 50% deposit uh, upon execution as well. So I'll just see if this kind of works to send this and we can see what I'm talking about here. Again, I, I want a signature, but I also, I want a signature, but I also want payment. All right, now this is gonna happen through Stripe. So that's really ultimately like what we're getting out of this whole setup. I'm going to execute the document and at the same time, I'm going to get payment. Now, if you don't use PandaDoc, you can still do this with kind of a templated process or an SOP, meaning 
you have a process by which, you know, as soon as the document is executed, you send out an invoice through QuickBooks. That can happen as well, okay? So it's all possible depending on, you know, the technology you're using. You don't need to use all this. I really like Pandadoc. It kind of helps to do everything all at once. It, it helps me to templatize. I look super professional and I can collect payments upon execution as well. Investors are expert outsourcers, okay? Help them get even better. So what I mean by this is I've seen, I'm an investor myself, we get really good at understanding that this business is complex and we need help from really good other, you know, professionals. We need to outsource, okay? And so they're really good at outsourcing. They're willing to pay for good outsourced talent as well. We got to help them along. How do we help them along? With technology, with process, and by making the decision really, really easy, focusing on the value. All right. Think of yourself less as, hey, I'm a bookkeeper. I'm going to track numbers and more of I'm going to deliver transformation for you and your business. I'm going to deliver something that you're currently lacking right now. You came to me not because you need the dollars and cents to make 100 percent accurate sense to you and your business. You need to see the reports and to understand how to grow and scale your business. And so you you're looking to hire somebody like me, a bookkeeper, to help you do that. Focus on value, exude that confidence, act like you've been there before, and eliminate all that friction, and you can get those 10K plus engagements with these clients, all right? Again, check out the forecasting tool that I have. I want you to plug in, you know, what's your average project? Hopefully it's 10K plus. It might not be yet, but use the forecasting tool to see kind of where you're at currently versus where you might be if you start to embrace some of this expert level knowledge and become a bookkeeper at the highest tier within this industry. Check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com. Add some comments here. I'll always be tracking those. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it and look out for the next video. I'll see you there.